This here is an illustration of Pascal's theorem. Suppose you have six points on the circle, as you can see here, and then label them as follows. A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, and C2. And the labels can be put in any order you like. Then, take each point and connect it with the two points that have nothing in common in their name. For example, A1 has something in common with B1 and C1, that's the 1, the index 1, and it has something in common with A2, the letter A but it has nothing in common with B2 and C2, therefore connect A1 with the points B2 and C2. Similarly, connect the point B1 with C2 and A2, and the point C1 with B2 and A2. Then you get three intersection points here, here, and here, the first one being the intersection points of the lines that contain the letters A and B, so A1, B2, and B1, A2. The second intersection point is the intersection point of the lines that contain A and C, so A1, C2, and C1, A2. And the third intersection point, the lines that contain B and C, B1, C2, and C1, B2. Pascal's theorem states that these three intersection points always lie on a straight line. Now let's prove Pascal's theorem. First of all, let's label this point C3, this point B3, and this point A3. Now notice that triangles A1, A2, B3 and C1, C2, B3 are similar, because from the cyclic quadrilateral A1, C1, C2, A2, we have that this angle equals this angle, and that this angle equals this angle. And so this triangle and this triangle share the same angles. Now let's chase some angles. First, consider this cyclic quadrilateral here, A1, C1, C2, B2. From it, we conclude that this angle equals this angle. Next, consider the cyclic quadrilateral A1, C1, B2, A2. From it, we get that this angle equals this angle. Next, consider the cyclic quadrilateral B1, C1, C2, A2. From it, we get that this angle equals this angle. And lastly, from the cyclic quadrilateral A1, B1, C2, A2, we get that this angle equals this angle. Let's construct the point C3 prime to be the isogonal conjugate of C3 with respect to this triangle here, A1, B3, A2. Then we know that this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle as well as this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle. And now consider the triangle A1, A2, B3, with the point C3 prime inside, and the similar triangle C1, C2, B3, with the point A3 inside. You're going to notice that this angle equals this angle, this angle equals this angle, this angle equals this angle, and this angle equals this angle, which means that C3 prime and A3 are actually corresponding points in the similar triangles. And from this it follows that triangle A2, B3, C3 prime is similar to triangle C2, A3, B3. Therefore, this angle here equals this angle here. But now we know that C3 prime and C3 are isogonal conjugates in this triangle, and therefore this angle equals this angle. So we conclude that this angle equals this angle, which means that the sum of this angle and this angle here is 180 degrees, meaning that C3, B3, and A3 lie on a straight line. Here's how Pascal's theorem could look like if we chose the points on the circle in a different order. If we chose them like this, A1, then B1, then C2, then C1, then A2, then B2. Then, A1, B2 intersects A2, B1 at the point C3, A1, C2 intersects A2, C1 at the point B3, and B1, C2 intersects B2, C1 at the point A3, and the points C3, B3, and A3 lie on a straight line. The proof here is actually analogous to the proof we gave before. First, let's notice that triangle A1, A2, B3 is similar to triangle C1, C2, B3, because from this cyclic quadrilateral, we know that this angle equals this angle. Then, consider this. This angle equals this angle, which from this cyclic quadrilateral equals this angle. Also, this angle equals this angle, which from this cyclic quadrilateral equals this angle here. Now let A3 prime be the isogonal conjugate of A3 with respect to the triangle C1, C2, B3. This means that the lines C2, A3 prime and C2, A3 are isogonal with respect to this angle, and so this angle equals this angle. And similarly, the lines A3 prime C1 and A3 C1 are isogonal with respect to the angle B3, C1, C2. And therefore, this angle here equals this angle here. And now notice how A3' is defined with respect to the triangle C1, C2, B3. 
and how point C3 is defined with respect to the similar triangle A1, A2, B3. You are going to notice that A3 prime and C3 are actually corresponding elements in these two similar triangles. We know that A3 prime and A3 are isogonal conjugates with respect to triangle C1, C2, B3, and therefore this line and this line A3, B3 are isogonal with respect to this angle, meaning that this angle equals this angle, where we've defined this angle to be 180 minus angle A3, B3, C2. But now that we know that A3 prime and C3 are corresponding elements in the two similar triangles C2, C1, B3 and A2, A1, B3, then we know that angle A3 prime B3 C1 equals angle C3 B3 A1, this angle here. This means that angle C3 B3 A1 is equal to 180 minus angle A3 B3 C2, meaning that A3 B3 and C3 lie on a straight line. Today we're going to have two optional problems. This is the first one. We have a triangle, and this here is the circumcircle of the triangle. And at each vertex of the triangle, we draw the tangent line to the circle at that point. So this tangent line, this tangent line here, and this tangent line. And then we intersect this tangent line with this line, this tangent line with this line, and this tangent line with this line at these three points. We need to prove that these three points lie on a straight line. And here's the solution. Suppose that this point here is not one point, but it's actually two points at the same place. And label these two points A1 and B2, so A1 and B2 coincide right here. Similarly, let C2 and B1 coincide right here, and C1 and A2 coincide right here. Now let's ask ourselves, what does it mean to take the line, for example, A1, B2? A line between a point and itself. What does it mean in the sense of Pascal's theorem? Well, let's take A1 and B2 to be points that are really, 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 really close. So close that we can't even see there are different points. But suppose for a moment they are different. Then the line A1, B2 would actually be really, really, really close to this tangency line. For example, see here, if this point is really close to this point on the circle, then the line that passes through both of these points really resembles the tangency line at one of the points, for example. And now let's apply Pascal's theorem for the points A1, B1, C1, A2, B2, and C2 that lie on this circle. We get that A1, B2, which is this line, and B1, A2, which is this line, intersect here at C3. B2, C1, intersects C2, B1, which is this line, at the point A3. And lastly, A1, C2, which is this line, intersects C1, A2, which is this line, at the point B3. And from Pascal's theorem, we conclude that the points B3, A3, and C3 lie on a straight line. This is the second optional problem. We have a triangle, and this point is arbitrary inside of the triangle. We draw this line and this line, and then we draw perpendiculars from this point to the two red lines, and from this point to this side and this side of the triangle. So we get these four feet of perpendiculars. We connect this foot and this foot with a line like that, and this foot and this foot with a line like that. We need to prove that this dashed line and this dashed line intersect at a point that lies on this side of the triangle. And here's the solution. We know that this point, this point, this point, and this point lie on the circle with diameter this segment, because of the 90 degrees angles here, 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 and here that we have. And therefore, we have six points on the circle, so we can use Pascal's theorem. Let's label the points as follows, A1, B1, C2, A2, B2, and C1. Then, Pascal's theorem tells us that A2, C2 intersects C1, A2 at B3, B1, C2 intersects C1, B2 at A3, and B1, A2 intersects A1, B2 at the point C3, then the points C3, A3, and B3 lie on a straight line, meaning that the point A3 lies on the line defined by B3 and C3. 